Hello, good evening, and welcome to tonight's Wednesday webinar. My name is Lupe Hernandez. I'm a student success advisor for ICANN. In the eastern uh, side of the state, I am housed basically out of uh, Iowa City and also the Quad Cities. If you're not familiar with ICANN, we are a nonprofit organization. Uh, we help students and uh, adults as well, uh, everyone, with their plans after post-secondary, uh, after high school. Um, this here is our mission. And these are the locations where we have offices. We also offer virtual appointments. So if you cannot get to one of our locations uh, in person, or if you would rather meet virtually, we also offer appointments via Zoom. This here is our uh, contact phone number and our link to our calendar. So if you would like to meet with us, uh, this is how you would do it. You would call us or you would just go to our website and schedule an appointment there. Um, tonight's... Um, Tonight's uh, webinar will be primarily on the scholarship process. Uh, before I start uh, with the actual webinar, I do want to share this information with you. Uh, this here are our materials is what we uh, are printed materials that we um, use when we do our presentations in person. So when we come to your school, uh, we will we would hand you a, a life after high school booklet or a how to pay for college booklet, depending on the topic. But these are available to you on our website now. So you can go to this website on top and uh, you can search for these booklets. They are in PDF version um, and they are available to you at no cost. Also the junior and senior countdown to college calendar. Uh, many, many parents or students have questions on when do we need to do things and you know when is our deadline? When does this need to happen so we don't fall behind? Um, this countdown to college uh, calendar is very helpful. It kind of walks the student through every month of their junior and senior year um, and tells them, hey, you know, it's it's November of your senior year. This is what needs to be happening. And next month, this is what you need to be doing as well. So again, all of these materials are on our website. Again, uh, the, the blue link on top is where it would take you to, to those documents. So a real quick overview on what we're going to cover uh, tonight. Just real quick, I'm just going to go over the FAFSA. I'm sure you guys already are aware of this, but just real quick overview on the FAFSA. I'm going to be going over the types of uh, the types and sources for scholarships. I'm going to be going over the applications, writing an essay, uh, if students are going to have to, uh, requesting letters of recommendation and creating an activities resume. And um, after students apply, for the scholarship, what happens then? And what if they actually get the money for the scholarship? So uh, let's begin with the FAFSA. So first and foremost, what is financial aid? Um, financial aid is a very broad term that covers pretty much any way that you are able to pay for college. It includes free money, which is scholarships and grants. And it also includes loans that have to be paid back. And these can, these can be taken out by the student or the parent. And it also includes employment while the student is in college, whether it's, it's work study on campus or employment off campus. So again, when you hear this term financial aid, um, don't automatically think that it's free money or it's loan money because it could be either or. So when you hear this term and you're like, well, what, you know, if you have additional questions, please make sure that you clarify. When people say financial aid, you need to ask, what kind of financial aid are we talking about? The free stuff or the stuff we have to pay back or uh, work for? The FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. Um, the FAFSA becomes available fall of senior year for the students to file. The website is studentaid.gov. Um, the FAFSA for academic year 2526, for the, so for the class of 2025, this application actually became available this past Monday on a beta phase. So it's still in a beta phase, but it is available to everyone to file. But the official launch of this website of the FAFSA will be December 1st. Okay. Please remember you can send the application to multiple colleges. So many times parents will ask, you know, we're ready, we're ready to do the FAFSA, but my son, daughter, they haven't um decided where they're going to attend or where to apply just know that you can send the application to multiple schools 
And once the application is submitted, you can always, the student can always go back in and adjust those, uh, those colleges, okay? Please be mindful of priority dates. So like I said, the official FAFSA launch is on December 1st, and you wanna get this application done before the college's priority dates, okay? So I'll give you an example. The, the Regent uh, Universities in our state, so University of Iowa, their priority date this year is February 1. Uh, Iowa State, February 4. And you and I is February 7th, right? So if any of your students are considering uh, attending or applying to these schools, February 1 for Iowa, February 4th for Iowa State, February 7th for you and I, this is when these colleges would like you to have the FAFSA submitted to be considered for the maximum amount of, of, uh, of financial aid, okay? Um, if your student is going to a private college, check with those colleges or you can go on our website. We also have a list of priority dates on our website, uh, but just make sure that you uh, are getting the FAFSA submitted by the college's priority dates. And in order to do this application, the student and the parent will need to have a studentaid.gov account. This was formerly known as an FSA ID. Okay, so if that sounds uh, familiar to some of you, uh, it's pretty much the same thing. They just changed the, the, the name. Okay, so in order to do the FAFSA, the student and the parent, one parent, will need to have a studentaid.gov account, and the account needs to be verified by the Social Security Administration, and that takes about one to three days. OK, so if you're if you're hearing me right now and you're like, oh, we can do the FAFSA now, um, but you haven't set up the student aid.gov account, do it tonight. And I'm thinking by Friday, you might be able to access the application and get the, the, the form submitted. OK, some students might have to submit what's called the CSS profile. This is the College Scholarship Service Profile. This is not a federal application. It is a private institutional form, okay? This is an online application used by colleges and scholarship programs to award non-federal aid, okay? It became available to file October 1st. We've already done a couple of these. So again, if your students are going to a college that is requesting the CSS profile, you can uh, go on there right now and get it submitted. Colleges might have different deadlines. Like I know uh, Washington University in St. Louis, their deadline was last Friday. So just, just make sure that you are aware if the college is requiring the CSS profile and if they are requiring it, when is the deadline to file? So this application, this CSS profile is not for everybody, okay? So please do not fill it out if you if it is, if it's not required. So over 400 selective colleges and universities do ask for this. So it's not very many schools, just about a little bit over 400 colleges in the country will ask for this college. And these tend to be, um, like selective schools, you know, the IVs, some more selective schools. So uh, don't do this application if it's not being requested by the school. Um, the CSS profile may only be submitted through the sign-on link available on cssprofile.org. This is also the website where the student will need to create their profile and uh, create their account in order to access the CSS profile. If your student is considering a college that requires this application and you would like help with this application, let us know and we can um, set up a time and get this uh, completed for you. All right, let's move on to where the scholarships are. There are four sources of scholarships that I'm gonna discuss. Uh, we're gonna discuss uh, colleges and universities, private and local entities, state scholarships and national scholarships. Let's start with college scholarships. Okay, so the college scholarships, of course, are available through the college where, where the student is applying to. Okay, there are several types of scholarships through the school. Some of them are automatic scholarships is what they call. Okay, so by um, what, what I mean by this is that simply by applying for admissions and submitting a transcript or submitting ACT scores, if they're going to submit ACT scores, some colleges don't require ACT scores. Um, some students might qualify for automatic academic or merit scholarships just based on their admissions application, okay? 
what a lot of students don't realize is that in addition to the automatic scholarships, there might be additional departmental scholarships, okay? So after the student has applied to a college, has been accepted, their acceptance letter says, oh, you qualify for our you know, automatic scholarship, whatever it may be called. Don't tell them to not stop there, to also look to see if there's any additional um, money scholarship that the student can qualify for, okay? Some colleges have, uh, once the student has been accepted, will give them access to their scholarship database. Okay, University of Iowa is, is one of those schools that once the student gets accepted, they will be able to look at the scholarship database for, for that college. So if they're gonna go into the College of Law or the College of Business or the College of Education, uh, they will be able to see those departmental scholarships, okay? Foundation scholarships um, are, scholarships where the student would submit an application and uh, depending on funding for that foundation that year from the college the student will be awarded accordingly if they qualify for it okay please be aware of deadlines because this is very important some colleges scholarship deadlines might be sooner than the fafsa priority date i'll give you an example uh, Scott Community College. Their FAFSA priority date, I believe, isn't until July 1st, but their foundation scholarship deadline is March 1. So you want to do the FAFSA, you want to do those scholarships before the scholarship deadline and not wait until the actual FAFSA priority date because you don't want to miss out on any of that institutional money. So again, you want to find out what your college's prior FAFSA priority date is, and then also ask what their uh, scholarship priority date is as well, okay? These are just some examples that I just want to show you. Uh, Kirkwood has a foundation scholarship. I believe theirs is available now. So any students uh, considering attending Kirkwood, their uh, foundation scholarship is available now. And I, I want to say the deadline is in March, but definitely go to the website directly to find out. Iowa State University uh, has uh, something called a one app, okay? So when a student applies, gets accepted, they will have access to fill out this one app. And by doing this one application, the student uh, pretty much is applying for all scholarships available through Iowa State. And then whichever scholarship the student qualifies for, whatever department, whatever uh group is awarding a scholarship, whatever foundation, uh, this one app will take care of all of those scholarships, okay? And then St. Ambrose, much like the University of Iowa, they have a scholarship database where they literally just have a list of scholarships available that students can go in and research and, and kind of uh, see which, which uh, scholarships they can apply for. All right. Another source of scholarships would be private and local scholarships. So this would be uh, the student's place of work. I'll give you an example. Like if they work for Hy-Vee, right? If they work for Hy-Vee or Fairway, there is something called the Iowa Grocers Association Scholarship. They would need to ask their manager about this scholarship, okay? Um, if you as a parent, if you work for a big company or a big corporation that might have some uh, benefits as far as paying for college or paying for your children's college, check with them as well. Sometimes churches have some scholarships, uh, local businesses and civic groups. So this is just something uh, not through not not through the college, just something private through your community, through where you work. Okay. I'll give you some examples. So currently there is a scholarship available through ISL Education Lending. The deadline is December 2nd. It is a very, very, very easy scholarship to apply for. And um, students can apply, parents can apply, grandparents can apply, and uh, like mom and, and dad can apply, and then the student can apply. So there, there's a lot of chances of you potentially getting this ISL Education Lending Scholarship. OK, and they 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 do two rounds of this scholarship. So the first deadline is December 2nd. But if you miss this deadline, um, you will be able to reapply again when the deadline is in March. But currently, uh, this is the this is the, the website to apply for the ISL education 
education lending scholarship. And the reason why I say that it's a very easy scholarship is because you don't have to write an essay. It's pretty much your demographic information. And then you um, will sign up to get like uh, information from ISL regarding uh, funding for education. So very easy. Uh, another scholarship that is coming due in a few months is the Iowa Farm Bureau Scholarship. So if anybody is a member of Iowa Farm Bureau, uh, please advise your student to look into the scholarship because that deadline is on January 29th. It is a very good scholarship. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, like I said, local groups, local organizations such as the American Legion, the Kiwanis, the Rotary, the, the Rotary Club, your local community foundation. There's a lot of community foundations here in the state of Iowa that offer amazing, amazing scholarships for uh, young people going off to uh, get their, their university education. Um, the best source of that local money would be the school counseling office, okay? The, uh, the school counseling office will get this information from the local groups and then the, the school counselor will post this information on the school's website or they will send emails or they will have this information in their office. So please advise your student from now until probably May, make it a habit for the students to be checking on those local scholarships because those scholarship season has literally just started and it's going to go on till probably may for the local scholarship. So if if a, if you tell your student, "Hey, go check with your school counselor about this uh, community foundation scholarship." And they're like, "Yeah, I I I I went and they gave me this info and then they don't go anymore." They need to be talking to to their school counselor every month because again, more and more scholarships will become available as the winter and spring uh progresses. Just wanna show you some examples of some community foundations that have scholarships available. The Community Foundation of Johnson County. I live in Johnson County, so I am very well, I'm very aware of this organization. If you live in Johnson County as well, definitely check them out. Community Foundation of Northeast Iowa, they also have really cool scholarships there. And the Quad Cities Community Foundation also has, uh, I believe 60 or over 60 scholarships. Uh, available for, for students in the Quad City area. So again, check with your uh, with, check with your school counselor, check with your employer, check with your businesses. They will likely have scholarships available uh, for students to apply for. State scholarships. So the student must be an Iowa resident and attend an Iowa college to qualify for some of these scholarships. Okay, so um, the Iowa tuition grant is for students who will be attending a private college in the state of Iowa. Okay, so if they're going to Kirkwood or if they're going to Iowa State, they wouldn't qualify for the scholarship, but if they're going to uh, Buena Vista or Loras or uh, Mount Mercy, they would qualify for the Iowa tuition grant depending on their results of the FAFSA, okay? Any student going into a vocational technical program, they might be they might qualify for some state money. Same thing with the KIBI or the Iowa Skilled Workforce Tuition Grant, the Last Dollar Scholarship, the All Iowa Opportunity Scholarship. There is a separate application for state scholarships, um, and it's through the Bureau of Iowa College Aid. If you go to this website here, you will be able to find the the. Uh, the, the link to the website, I would advise that you try to get this state application done by, by March 1, just to make sure that you're not missing out on any state aid, but for sure, for sure, for sure, try to get this application done by uh, July 1st, okay? Just wanna give you some examples of some state scholarships, the All Iowa Opportunity Scholarship and the Robert D. Blue Scholarship. Again, if you go to the website of the Bureau of Iowa College Aid, you will see a list of all, like a complete list of all state scholarships that are uh, available on their website. All right, I also wanna mention that we have a scholarship database, okay? I am actually the one that's in charge of this database. And yesterday I did a complete overhaul of this website and everything is updated. Now, if you go to this website tonight, you will see that a lot of scholarships for the deadline, it says TBD, to be determined. And the reason why I put TBD is because some of those um, 
organizations haven't um they haven't set their their deadline yet okay so i'm going to be updating this website every month until the end of may so keep checking back uh, to this website uh, or our ICANN website because again i'm going to be reviewing this on a monthly basis until the class of 2025 graduates um so keep checking back but this is our scholarship uh, database National scholarships. All right, these are available to everyone. The, the thing about national scholarships is that they have deadlines year round, all right? Compared to like the local scholarships, usually there's like a scholarship season for local scholarships, like from November to the end of May, and then they kind of wind down after, you know, when the summer starts. With national scholarships, um, there are deadlines that are happening that are coming due in June, July, August, September, October, November. So that's the good thing about these these national scholarships. There's they're continually uh, having scholarships that are available. There are many scholarship websites out there, but please make sure that you are going to ones that are legit that are not going to be asking you for a credit card. That are not going to be scamming you. Uh, some that we that we have. Uh, use that we tell families about are these three scholarships.com, fastweb.com, and scholarsapp.com. Another thing to keep in mind about national scholarships is that, like I said, it's available to everyone. That means that students are competing with students from all over the country. So it's very competitive, right? So if you find a scholarship, a, a national scholarship, and you're like, this is a really good scholarship, and there's a very good chance that I could potentially get it. I really hope you do, but also keep in mind that you are competing with uh, students from all over the country that have that same thought, okay? So what I tell students is yes, use national scholarships as a resource, um, apply for them if, if you qualify for it, but really, uh, look into that the, those private scholarships a little bit more because your competition is your classmates usually or people in your community which the applicant pool is much uh, smaller all right some examples of national scholarships national honor society the work ethic scholarship program the coca-cola foundation the ford motor company scholarships so these are pretty well-known scholarships that would be available that would be listed on on these national websites um again competition is high because a lot of students are applying for them but they are available if you qualify to apply um let's move on to some tips okay so like i just said students should apply to as many scholarships as possible. If they meet the criteria, and please, this is important. If students meet the criteria, they should apply. I tell students, do not waste your time applying for things that you don't qualify for because you did not read the criteria for the scholarship. But if you read the criteria and you're like, yeah, that's totally me, apply, apply for that scholarship. And even if it's like a $200 scholarship or 300 or $100, small amounts add up. And that 100 bucks that they might get from their local business or local group, that's $100 they don't have to borrow in federal aid, in, in federal loans, okay? Save some time with an activities resume. So um, scholarship applications will generally, generally ask you for the same information over and over and over and over again. So if students create an activity resume, an activities resume that has all that information in one document and it's put together in a very, in a professional format and it's easy to follow, it's easy to read, you can attach that to the application so you students can save time in filling out that scholarship application because all the information that it's asking for is already on the activities resume. Um, it's gonna save students a lot of time and students can, re, can reuse this activities resume. Here's an example of an activities resume. Um, we have actually made this template available to you. So if you go to that website, um, to that link at the bottom of this page, it's an automatic word download. Um, so you can you know, take off Mallory Morgan's information and uh, use it for your own information. 
and use it for when you're when students are applying for those scholarships. So again, feel free to use our template. There are some high schools where creating an activities resume is part of the curriculum. So students might already have an activities resume that they have because they created it during a careers class, or maybe they were working on it on a you know English class. So ask the student if they have an activity activities resume and if they do just look it over uh, polish it up a little bit and if they don't feel free to use our template to create their activities resume some more tips the devil is in the details uh preventable mistakes are detrimental to scholarship applicants pay close attention to the details um uh, what am i trying to say like um the computer is not going to catch all mistakes, all right? So look over, look over your work. Have people, have other people look over your work. Uh, make sure that you're not missing deadlines. Make sure that you are providing uh, correct information. Make sure that you're not missing uh, any information. My advice to you is do not leave anything blank because I don't know if you forgot to answer the question or if the question doesn't pertain to you. So if something doesn't pertain to you, please make sure that you put not applicable or NA or you know put something there so that the person reading the application knows that you didn't just overlook this question. Also providing too much information, all right? So be, be very careful with this. Um, scholarship committee members, and I am one of them because I am a scholarship committee chair for an organization. Um, we, we have to read a lot of scholarship applications, a lot of scholarship essays, and, and we, we kind of want to get through them, you know, efficiently. And if a student is providing more information that we need, it's not going to help the student. All right. Also not following directions. Okay. If the scholarship says type it to, for it to be typed and it's written in pen, again, not following directions. If the scholarship is saying, do not provide a like cover sheet and you're giving us a cover sheet with your senior picture on it, again, not following directions. So just make sure that uh, students are avoiding these common mistakes that they're following the directions of the scholarship to a T. Um, be organized and be prepared. Like I said, right now is kind of the beginning of scholarship season, all right? and um, even though a lot of scholarship, a lot of organizations haven't set their deadlines yet for this upcoming uh, spring, you know, for these up upcoming months, what you can do, for example, is go to our scholarship database, our ICANN scholarship database, go through the entire list. And if there is a scholarship that, that for the deadline, it says TBD, but you're like, I can apply for that, write, write it down so that you know to keep checking back to see when it becomes available to fill out. The same thing with your local uh, scholarships, right? Even though the, let's say, Rotary Club scholarship isn't available yet, but it's something that you you would qualify for, uh, make a note of it uh, so that when it is be, when, when it is available, you're prepared, you're organized, and you're ready to go. Keep a list of deadlines and apply early right? Um, the information that you will likely need to submit, it depends on the scholarship. Like I said in my previous slide, don't overshare. Don't overshare, um, but also provide what's needed. So they might ask for your high school transcript. They might ask for the activities resume. Some scholarships might ask for ACT or SAT scores, all right, so be be prepared with those. I understand that a lot of students are not doing ACT because it is test optional for some colleges. So be aware of that to see if it's a requirement. Um, they pro they'll probably ask for a GPA, a class rank. All right, and all this information, well, the ACT score, the GPA, and the class rank will probably already be on the activities resume. So there's that. And then letters of recommendation. All right. Be prepared if the organization is asking for letters of recommendation or maybe one letter of recommendation. Some scholarships are based on the information that you get from the FAFSA. So <clears throat> some scholarships are based on financial need 
And in, to determine a family's financial need, they might ask for the SAI score from the FAFSA that was submitted. So please be aware of or, or figure out, find out where, where you can find the SAI once the FAFSA is submitted. And I'll tell you where it is. Once the FAFSA is submitted, it's going to be on the student's dashboard and they will be able to see their, their SAI score from there. All right, <clears throat> some more, uh, just the applications. Look at the application criteria. Again, make sure you're following the directions carefully. Um, if you meet the criteria, apply. Answer every question, follow the directions. Please use a professional email address, okay? Uh, I tell students when they become high school seniors, they need to get in the habit of using their personal email accounts um, because a lot of school districts when students graduate, this district is gonna deactivate their school emails and the students will no longer have access to those emails. So I tell students, you know, when you're starting to apply for admissions, financial aid, scholarships, jobs, internships, get in the habit of using your Gmail, your Yahoo, your iCloud, because that's gonna, that's gonna be there even after you graduate. Um, avoid misspelled words, improper punctuation, bad grammar and slang. Uh, don't use acronyms or abbreviations, spell things out. Even though you and I know what National Honor Society is, some people may not know what NHS is, okay? When you're writing, when you're writing things out, write it, write it out. Um, you know, you're writing a professional document and not a text message to your mom or your dad or or, or a friend. Um, also, if you're going to type the application, oh, actually type the application. If you can type the application, unless you're told otherwise, it just it's just, it's just going to save a lot of time. <clears throat> excuse me, and it's going to avoid any confusion in case the student's handwriting is not very legible. Okay, so if you're able to. Type the application and use business font. Uh, Times New Roman, Ariel, those are professional fonts. All right, let's go back a little bit to letters of recommendation. Some scholarships might ask you for this, okay? Be prepared if this were to happen. What I tell students is think of at least three people that you could ask for a letter of recommendation from. People that know the student well, that can speak to their accomplishments, their work ethic, their character. Uh, example, a teacher, a school counselor, a coach, a principal, community member, pastor, employer. Um, do not ask family members, friends, or relatives because they're biased, okay? They're not wrong. The student is an amazing person, but if you ask a family member, a friend, or a relative, um, there be a bit of bias. So again, someone not related to the student. Whomever you ask, give them at least two weeks in advance to write this letter. Okay. If you if you go to them today and say, hey, uh, this is due on Friday. Um, can you write this letter for me? They're they're probably gonna do it, but it's not gonna be as good as if you were to give them, you know a full two, two, two to three weeks in advance, all right? The more time you give them, the better quality letter that they're gonna write. Give them the scholarship criteria, tell them what scholarship um, they're applying for and what the scholarship committee is asking for and also give them an, your activities resume so they know what the student has been doing from ninth grade up until this point, okay? For example, your AP biology teacher knows that you're an amazing student academically you you you're a good communicator everything you're a perfect student but they may not know that as a freshman you made it to state cross country or that you did habitat for humanity in in the in the summer or you volunteered your time at the library so these are things that they would find out through that activities resume let's move on to essays if there is a prompt for the A's essay, and usually there is, read it, make sure you understand it, and answer the essay prompt. Think before you start writing, right? 
if you're struggling to get started, brainstorm ideas, create a timeline, you know, intro, body, uh, conclusion, that type of thing. Um, if you can't come up with something, come back to it later. Or contrary to what I to what I just said, start writing on a Word document to just start, just start writing. All right. And you can always come back and, and edit and delete, but usually something will will come. You will, you can also look online for sample um scholarship essays. Please avoid AI. I know that's a thing now, but please try to avoid that. Um I haven't come across it as someone that reads scholarship essays, um, but I'm sure it's out there. So you don't want to get caught up with that kind of thing. All right. When writing essays, um, sell yourself. All right. So please sell yourself that you you are a great person, um, but don't try to overly impress. Like, don't don't be like a show off. Don't, make sure the tone of the essay isn't like arrogant. All right. Also be honest, show that you're well-rounded, present a positive attitude. If, if you're asked about challenges, explain how you overcame and how you are looking, uh, optimistically to, to the future. Like, don't be a Debbie Downer. Like I, I understand the, this was a challenge. This, and I respect it. I, I acknowledge it. Um, but how has it molded you to be where you are now and how is it going to help you to be the person you want to be in the future okay talk about your goals and how you plan to achieve them and how their money the committee's money is going to help you with all that know your audience this is important you guys because again this has happened to our organization where that where a student is applying for our scholarship and they have no idea what or what our organization stands for so if, if you're going through through a scholarship criteria and you're like, I can apply for this, look who is uh, awarding, look who is uh, who, who the organization is that is giving away this money, okay? Um, don't repeat information from your application and, and, and activities resume. One of my biggest pet peeves is when I'm, I'm reading an essay and the student is, is like, I have a 3.7 GPA and I have been the captain of my swim team. Well, you know, I already read that. I already read that in your application or in your activities resume. Like I, I want to read your essay. Um, also, the essay should sound like the student. Like I said, a lot of students are not a lot. Again, I haven't seen it, but um, some students might be using AI for, for writing essays, or sometimes parents have good intention and want to help them write a really good essay, but sometimes it sounds too much like the parent, and you can tell when a parent has been uh, writing the essay for the student. Um, make a memorable ending and finish strong, all right? Final submission, before a student submits the application, take a break. Um, before you make a final check, step away for a day or two or a weekend and then come back to it later and look at it with fresh eyes. Um, make sure that everything that the committee is asking for is included. This is this again, one of my biggest pet peeves, because for our scholarship committee, we do ask for several documents and sometimes students submit and they're like they, they forgot their transcript or they forgot their uh spring schedule or whatever. So please make sure that you're submitting all the information that is being requested. If you're going to submit an application online, make sure all attachments and uploads are there. Again, big, big pet peeve. If the student is mailing or hand delivering, use a large envelope. This might just be something that's petty of me. <laughs> so I apologize for this, but I, I just think it looks better. Okay. If a student spends a little bit more money on like a large envelope versus like rolling it into like a letter size envelope that just helps it it, it does make a difference honestly <laughs> and please make sure that you mail before the deadline and make sure that you get a receipt because again i have had to go back to a student and say hey we didn't get your application until three days after the, the deadline and the student came back and said i have a receipt and here it is it was put in on time and we considered the application so make sure that if you're going to mail it make sure that you get a receipt if the student is awarded, 
keep track of how much the student has won um, and know if the amount is going to come all at once at the beginning of the, uh, the academic year or if they're gonna do like half of the amount for first semester and then half of the amount for second semester, okay? Keep in mind that often money is sent directly to the college. So please be aware that, um, please make sure that, that you know this because if you're getting a scholarship and you're thinking, oh, they're gonna send it to the school and the school's like, we haven't gotten anything, they, they might've mailed it to you. So just make sure that you're aware that if you win this money, how, how are you gonna get it? Keep track of um, who it will come from and when. For example, <clears throat> with my organization, we select the winners, but the check is coming from our national office in Washington, D.C. So again, this might be confusing for some people, for some students is like, well, I apply for my local organization. Why am I getting a check from Washington, D.C.? All right. So just make sure that you're aware of where the money's coming from. Um Make sure um, that you know if you need to turn anything in and to whom to receive the scholarship. Some, some scholarship committees will ask you for follow-up information if you win. And uh, make a note to see if it's renewable, if you can reapply next year or it was just a one and done type of thing, right? And send a thank you note. We, we as committee, uh, scholarship committee members really enjoy reading those thank you notes. So, you know, if you win some money, say, uh, you know, write a little thank you note. One last thing, uh, students, please uh, be aware of your social media presence. Uh, whatever platform students are on nowadays, um, just be aware of what's going on there. Um, again, as a scholarship committee member, sometimes when we're kind of struggling with deciding between two students and they're pretty much both, you know, worthy of the scholarship, we might use social media to kind of just check them out, just, just to see what's out there, all right? And it's not just for scholarships, you guys. It could be for admissions. It could be for uh, uh, jobs. So just tell tell their students or students, if you're listening to this, clean up your, your social media uh, presence, be aware of your settings and who can tag you and who's following you and who you're following, all that stuff. Don't do anything you wanna see in the news or talk about in court. Hopefully that never comes to that. Your phone, student cell phones, please set up your voicemail. Sometimes, Sometimes we have to call you. And again, it might not just be for scholarships. It might be the admissions office. It might be a coach. It might be a potential employer. Um, if, we, if we can't reach you, we can't provide you important information about your future, all right? So um, if you're able to answer your phone, and if you're not able to set up your voicemail um, and make sure that you're checking those voicemails often, all right? So check and respond to voicemails. And lastly, please be aware of any scams. Um, if you or the student or whomever is getting, uh, you know, just text messages or emails that sound kind of scammy, too, too good to be true, they probably are a scam. Don't give out your credit card for a scholarship that, no, uh, you can't, if somebody is like, oh, you can't get this information anywhere, anywhere else, that's not true um, because you can talk to your school counselor, your college, you can, um, uh, look to organizations like ICANN or the Bureau of Iowa College Aid, and we will be able to assist you in any way we can for free at no cost. Um, this is our contact information here, and there is available. In, uh, I do. Um, we offer help in Spanish. We. I do have two questions here, so let me see. Can students who are going out of state apply for state scholarships? The answer is no. So for the Bureau of Iowa <clears throat> uh, College Aid Scholarships, a student must be an Iowa resident and going to an Iowa college to qualify for the state scholarships, okay? Same thing if they're going to school in Colorado, right? They will not qualify for the state of Colorado aid because they're not Colorado residents, okay? Uh, another question, do you have to know what college you are attending to apply for scholarships? Not necessarily, no. 
uh, because a lot of scholarships, their criteria is just, you must be going to an accredited college. Or sometimes in the criteria, it'll say, must be attending the University of Iowa. I actually saw one of those yesterday when I was updating the website. Um, so the criteria will tell you, um, you know, uh, if a student has to be going to a certain college or if they have to know where they're gonna be attending. But usually for the most part, um, as long as it's an accredited college, uh, the all, all private scholarships should be should be available. Hey, I didn't see any other questions. I wanna thank everybody for joining me um, tonight. Uh, you have uh, our contact information. So if you do have additional questions, if you need help with FAFSA, please let us know. Have a good night. Thank you, bye.